The anxiety was huge, no two ways about it. When you hear the word from the doctor's lips, you know, you have cancer, it's, uh, it's pretty uh, life-altering. And um, there was a lot of uh, soul-searching, um, a lot of uh, tough times. But nonetheless, I educated myself. My PSA was extremely high, and it took a further jump after, my, uh, after I had my biopsy. And uh, so they moved up the surgery as quick as possible, got me in, and uh, I decided on the uh, robotic surgery, uh, less intrusive and uh, quicker re recovery time. And I knew that Dr. Powler was uh, about as good as it gets. Now that you've decided upon surgery as the treatment for your prostate cancer, there are several steps that we need to inform you about. Step one will be the pre-admission clinic visit. Our pre-admission clinic is a clinic designed specifically to check patients over before their surgical date. It's typically held within 30 days of the booked surgical date. My name is Lynette. I'm one of the nurses in the pre-admission clinic, and you're having the robotic assisted laparoscopy prostatectomy. At the pre-admission visit, the nurses will walk you through the preparations to be done immediately before surgery. That includes a bowel prep which means cleaning out your bowels before surgery, as well as the instructions about your diet before surgery. And you'll need to go to the drugstore, buy two bottles of the Citromag oral preparation, which you'll take. Right. At that visit, there's typically a nurse and sometimes an internal medicine physician and or anesthesiologist who will see you and make sure that everything is optimized health-wise before your surgery. This pre-admission clinic visit allows us to make sure all of the blood work, cardiograms, x-rays, and other necessary testing is all completed and that everything is okay to proceed to the operation. Now on the day of your surgery, you will come in two hours before your scheduled time. Murph? Hi. Hi, come on in. That day, you'll meet several nurses who will check you through the process. Initially, you'll report to the admitting department. They will take you to surgical daycare unit. Good morning, I'm Andrew, one of the anesthetic doctors. There will be an operating room nurse, as well as an anesthesiologist, who will both review your current health status and answer any questions you have prior to proceeding into the operating room theater. From there, you will proceed into the operating room when the operating room is prepared. You'll see me as well. And we are removing his prostate, doing a radical prostatectomy using the robot. We will do our surgical checklist, so you'll hear me announce what surgery we're going to be doing. Don't be alarmed, that's part of our normal process. From there, the next memory you will have will be waking up in the recovery room. At that time, there'll be nurses attending to you to monitor your vital signs. Everything's all finished. And to make sure that you're coming out of the anesthetic appropriately. As well, if you have someone in the family waiting room you'd like me to speak with after surgery, please notify me before you go to sleep, and I'm happy to go speak with them and let them know how your surgery went. In the recovery unit, the nurses will be monitoring the vital signs but also we'll be monitoring your pain levels. Are you having any pain? A little bit. I have some medication that will help with that. They're specifically trained to keep you very comfortable following surgery. Some common things patients experience in the recovery room include an urge to urinate. That's from the catheter that's in the bladder and a response of your body to the surgery. Don't be alarmed. We have medications that will aid you and give you some relief from that sensation. Following your recovery room stay, you'll be transferred to our inpatient ward. Most patients stay between one and three days in our inpatient unit. Up there, you'll meet several different nurses, one of whom will be assigned to your care and will provide you with pain control, your dietary needs, your hygiene needs. The nurses are highly trained and will be monitoring for any complications following surgery. 
They'll also get you up and walking very soon after your surgery. It's important that you're up and walking to prevent other complications from developing, such as blood clots in your legs or pneumonia. If you're on medications that you take routinely at home before surgery, the nurses will administer the appropriate ones to you. Certain medications are not given, and there are specific medical reasons why we hold these back. If you have any concerns about your medications, please discuss that with the nurse. Okay. Great. During your inpatient stay on the ward, you'll be greeted by a home care liaison nurse. This nurse will be arranging for home care supports when you're discharged home. There is information about who's involved with your care at home. After the home care liaison nurse has set up your home care support in the community, your inpatient nurse will also go over discharge instructions with you. You'll receive your prescription for painkillers and antibiotics as needed. And our nurse will answer all of your questions. The home care nursing staff in the community will provide 24 hour a day support for you while you're recovering in the early post-operative period. That includes whether you're in the City of London or from outside our region. We have liaisons with all the different home care nursing organizations in the province. Important things when you're at home. The nurses will come in and check your wounds, check your vital signs, and ensure that the catheter is functioning properly. An important issue is to ensure the catheter is not damaged or tugged on, as well that it's always draining some urine. Hello. If the catheter plugs up for any reason, you must call the home care nurse to have this person provide care. Following surgery, your catheter will be left in approximately two weeks. We will schedule you a visit to the urology clinic at St. Joseph's Hospital. I find it very important to have patients return here for their catheter removal rather than have it done in the community. It's important that only an experienced nurse removes this catheter and the catheter should never be replaced if there's a problem prior to your catheter removal visit. In the event that you have a problem and the home care nurse wishes to change the catheter, I ask that that individual contact me directly. The catheter should not be changed by anyone other than myself or my medical staff. Mr. Hawkins? Yes. Hi. Come on down. For the catheter removal visit, you'll meet one of our experienced nurses who will walk you through the catheter removal process and will give you instructions regarding some pelvic exercises to perform for your urinary incontinence. Also, universally, men leak urine when the catheter comes out. It can be very alarming and distressing. But if you're mentally prepared, the vast majority of men do very well. We provide you with undergarment protection, but it is something to purchase prior to your visit so you have supplies at home for urinary leakage. Following the catheter removal, we'll also make a referral for you to see a physiotherapist here in London. His name is Bill Landry. There's your bladder. So I'm hoping that your bladder is going to go up. We're going to tighten a little bit. Hold it. He has a particular interest in training men with pelvic floor physiotherapy. He has a unique program of pelvic exercises to aid in your return of normal urinary function. Mr. Landry will meet with you and spend time to go over the exercises and ensure that you understand how to perform them correctly. And so we're going to use a 24-hour pad test, okay? And what you need to do is you need to get yourself a kitchen scale. Mm -hmm. You're going to want to get one that's digital, that measures in grams. We also recommend doing a 24-hour urinary pad test. What that involves is weighing the undergarment protection daily and keeping track of the weight. That helps us understand how much leakage is occurring and whether we need to be more aggressive with our physiotherapy. Following the physiotherapy and catheter removal visit, another visit will be scheduled here at St. Joseph's. I will review your healing, 
as well, another important aspect will be the discussion of your final surgical pathology. That's the final answer as to the extent of the cancer within the prostate and the surrounding tissues that I've removed. This is very important for prognosis as well as for consideration of how we will follow your case. So overall it's good news. Good. Good news. In some instances I have to recommend further treatments such as radiation or hormones. In many other cases we are simply going to be following the PSA blood test. Following surgery, PSA should become undetectable or a very, very low level. In the event that the PSA is not at the appropriate level, that may signal the requirement of further treatments. Another important aspect of prostate cancer care includes the participation in clinical trials. These trials are purely voluntary but we have many of them available here at St. Joseph's Healthcare because we're an academic tertiary care hospital. I participate in several trials investigating new and novel ways of looking at prostate cancer and minimally invasive surgery, and you may be approached to consider participating. This is again purely voluntary, and if you do not want to participate, it does not alter your care at all. You will still get excellent care here. Clinical trials are altruistic in many ways. They may benefit the person who participates, but at other times it is to help future generations of men battle this disease. Other clinical trials involve rehabilitation after surgery, including the incontinence and the potential erectile dysfunction issues that may arise. Please consider the clinical trial if you are approached, but feel no obligation. On this DVD, we also have a segment showing some surgical video that I've taken during other patients' operations. If you're keen and interested, you can go to the DVD main menu and select Surgical Procedure Footage. If you're squeamish or would rather not see this, it isn't necessary to see, and you can just keep watching this video. Many men ask what they can do to prepare themselves for surgery while waiting for their surgical date. Some important things include regular exercise, losing weight if you're above the target weight for your height, eating a balanced diet with fruits and vegetables, low in saturated fat is also helpful. There's not a lot of good evidence for specific diets rich in vitamins, or other things such as selenium or antioxidants. But in all likelihood, a balanced diet will give you everything you need. From a physical standpoint, um, what I did and that was really helpful and I was advised to do it was to uh, start the Kegel exercises early, well in advance of my surgery. And that is instrumental in helping you retain your, your continence. And that's important for sure. I also went to, to working out and strengthening my core because I knew that would be something that would uh, help me in my recovery. Uh, mentally, you just have to stay positive. You totally have to stay positive. Um, surround yourself with positive people. That goes without saying. Um, and there's times when you, you, know, you have those uh, questions and the, the mind starts to wander a bit. Just get rid of it and keep positive. Other things men can do is to try to decrease their stress. If you're a smoker, you should absolutely attempt to quit smoking because that increases your risk of complications. If you have a family physician, it's a good idea to book an appointment for a health review to ensure that you're in the best physical shape you can be to proceed to surgery. Yeah, well, there's a risk with any procedure, whether you're being, uh, you know, put under or, or otherwise, uh, there's always that risk. So, uh, um, again, research helps a lot. Um, I was very confident because uh, I knew the surgeon I was dealing with was extremely good and competent. I knew the facility was good and the, uh, the, the robotic uh, surgery itself was uh, proven to be very, very good. So uh, there was a confidence level there that really helped me. I've recovered completely. I'm totally active love golf and in very short order uh, from the, after my surgery taking a short you know a period of time to get back to speed sort of thing uh, 
not a problem at all. Uh, I was swinging the golf club firm and full within a short period of time and uh, not playing any better, but not playing any worse. I also enjoy uh, motorcycling and uh, that was a concern, especially with the continents. And uh, I'm happy to say that that is not a problem at all, any way, shape or form. I didn't know if I'd be able to uh, bounce back into them or how long it might be. But uh, as it turned out, it wasn't a concern that was a big deal at all. It didn't take very long and I enjoy everything that I did be before. I enjoy it more now too, for obvious reasons. Being diagnosed with prostate cancer is a life-altering event. For many men, the unknown and the uncertainty of the cancer diagnosis leads to much stress and anxiety. I will do my best, as will my team, to answer your questions and to walk you through this journey. I look at this as a team and we will do everything we can to help you with your battle against prostate cancer. You know, the, the, uh, the result for me has been a real uh, renewed look at life and uh, what I enjoy and trying to do more of those things and uh, just improve yourself, how you approach life and how you approach people, relationships.